It's Brooke with Mrs. Coghill Farm. Boy, do we have a fun day planned for today. This is something I've been wanting to try, but honestly, I've been a little intimidated. And maybe you have too. So hopefully this will set us all straight and let us realize that we can accomplish freeze drying meat. So I've had some chicken that has been in the refrigerator that I've been planning to use. And time simply got away from me. I am to the point where I either have to freeze this chicken or cook it. And quite frankly, I want to do something with it that I can use throughout our busy season. And I'm gonna attempt to freeze dry it. I'm, I've been on the fence about freeze drying meat because it, it just doesn't sound like it would be a good thing. But from the experience I've had in the past, everything that I freeze dried has came out good. It's, um, if it goes in good, it comes out good. My pineapple was an exception. I still have one of those sitting on my counter waiting on it to ripen because I think that was just simply a case of the fruit wasn't ripe enough. You can freeze dry raw meat. I'm not gonna do that. I wanna be able to have something that I can use in a quick pinch to prepare a meal. And I'm gonna pre-cook the chicken. Now, if I was preparing it by freeze drying it raw, it would have to be cooked in order to use it. I'm gonna take y'all with me while I attempt what I think is gonna be a game changer. Me, like most of you guys, when you grocery shop, you're probably looking for not only the best bargain, but the healthiest option for your family as well. So in this case, it was buying a family pack of chicken. And I'm using boneless, skinless chicken breast. I buy it in a family pack and I normally break it down into smaller portions and freeze it. Well, that still doesn't take any time away from anything because I still have to prepare meals and still have to cook it. So I'm thinking doing it this way is gonna cut down my time on preparing meals dramatically. I am going to boil the chicken and pre-cook it first. And then we're going to shred the chicken and place it on the freeze dryer trays. And I'm also gonna season it in different ways because here in our house, Jason and I like to eat uh, salad for lunch. And while I have farm fresh eggs that I add to the salad, I don't usually have chicken. I, I, well, not to say I don't have chicken. I don't have time to cook chicken to put on a salad. So this is gonna give me an opportunity to literally grab chicken off the shelf and add it to a salad. Also, we like to have fajitas. That's a quick and easy put together meal that's semi-healthy. Um, we can cut up some bell peppers and onions and saute those and then use the seasoned chicken and have pretty much an instant meal. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cut the chicken into bite-sized pieces. Well, pieces that will cook quicker, I should say, not necessarily bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna depend on um, shredding the chicken to make it into the sizes that we need for our meals. But first I'm gonna take the chicken and just simply cut it up into smaller portions and um, boil them that way. I will get a good quick cook and I want it to come up to the correct 165 degree doneness temperature before I freeze dry it. Okay, so I have my chicken um, cut up into smaller pieces and I did trim away any excess fat so I mentioned before that I'm gonna boil the chicken and I simply got a large pot here and I'm going to salt the water just as if I would be cooking it to consume it right now. I'm gonna turn my burner on and put the chicken in. So now we'll just give this a little time to cook. I think we're safe to say that the chicken is done. So now on to the next step. 
Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to shred the chicken. And this is a little tip that some of you may and may not know. I am fortunate enough to have a KitchenAid mixer that was gifted to me by my parents many, many, many years ago when Jason and I were first married. And I'm so thankful to have it because I use it a lot. So I've got the cooked chicken here and I'm simply gonna put it in the mixer with this attachment on it while it's warm. And you're gonna see how simple it is to shred chicken. And now all you're gonna do is make sure your mixer's locked and on a low speed for about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, let it turn and you can see what a good job it's doing of shredding the chicken. I don't think that was even 30 seconds. But y'all look at it. I mean, it is, it's shredded just to the right consistency. And just uh, one bowl at a time, I'm going to place my shredded chicken onto the pans. And I've got to kind of even these out a little bit. This one has the most on it. It was the first one that I did, but I'm just going to take some off of this one and add it to the other one. Okay, decisions, decisions. We are in my pantry where I have all my seasoning stored. And this is just about the only thing in my life that's organized, but it is. And that's just because I got to the point where I couldn't, couldn't deal with, um, not knowing what kind of spices I had. So I'm going to go with this one. It's a uh, called stand stuff. It's made in Panama city, Florida. And it's something we discovered while we were down there. We needed something to go on some fish, but it's also good for chicken. All right. My second choice is going to be right here. This is old Bay seasoning. And i um, thankful to one of our viewers who sent us this large container of Old Bay seasoning. This one is, I'm not even sure how you say it, T Tony Cacheries Creole seasoning. I'm going to give that a try. And then the last one I'm just going to do with salt and pepper. I could have just left the chicken plain and not, not done any seasoning. But if we're going to use it for the things that I mentioned earlier, I think it needs to be seasoned. And who's to say this is the only time I'm going to do this? If it turns out well, which I expect it will, then this may become something that I continue to do because it's definitely going to make my life easier. Okay, so here they go. And I've got them written down, the order I'm putting them in. I'm also interested to see how long this takes. Y'all stay tuned for some freeze dried chicken. This may be the most excited I have been to freeze dry something. And I'm taking them out in the order I put them in because of the seasoning. Okay. So this one is just salt and pepper. Okay. Can't try it yet. Okay. This one is Old Bay. Okay. This one is, I've been working on how to say this. That's Tony Cacheray's. Okay. That's probably not right either, but. And this one is Stan Stuff. Okay. All right, so do you want to try it? I just wanna, freeze yeah, dry? I want to try it just freeze dry. You want to try stand stuff first? I, I like stand stuff. Oh my gracious. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it tastes like chicken. And it you know tastes what? like chicken, but it's not chicken consistency. The longer it stays in your mouth, <laughs> it starts to, the texture comes back to like chicken. It's weird. So I wasn't too interested in trying it just freeze dried because I can't see me just carrying a bag of chicken around and munching on it. Yeah. And and, and it being crunchy. Right. 
but this is what I was looking forward to. So to reconstitute meat that has been freeze dried, that has been pre-cooked, you have a bowl of hot water, okay? Yeah. So we're not gonna know which one's which because I'm putting four different pieces. Well, I guess I can do them one at a time. What do yeah. you think? That's yeah, fine. You have a bowl of hot water. Do you yeah. think that'll be okay? I mean, we're not testing no. out seasonings no. here. We're just testing I, out chicken. So, so it doesn't matter. I don't think yeah, it's good. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna make sure we like it all. In goes two, in goes three, and this one is just your salt and pepper. All right, so back to what I was saying. When you freeze dry meat to reconstitute it, you have a bowl of hot water. You put your meat in and the meat is not gonna absorb more water than it can hold. So you just wait a minute or two and the water will be reabsorbed into the meat to where it should taste like what it's supposed to, yeah. which is chicken in our case. If it had not been cooked, of course you wouldn't take this step. You would cook it first. Yeah. But. Is it ready? I think so. It looks like it's ready. All right, ready? Ready. You sure? I'm sure. I don't know about this. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is the best thing I've freeze dried. And I couldn't be happier because we, like most of you guys, are busy people. And to have this chicken sitting on my counter in a mason jar, ready to use. Yeah. It's already been cooked, okay? So all I gotta do is just add it to a recipe. This is wonderful. You gotta try it, Jason. Okay. Oh, it smells like chicken. <laughs> it's chicken. Same texture. No different. No different. It's just like it was in its original state. What That's do you think? That's crazy. <laughs> That's like magic. <laughs> That's crazy, y'all. When I thought about it and I came up with the idea that I was going to do a complete video on freeze-dried chicken, Jason kind of looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> but I told him that I'd seen some of you guys' mm. comments asking, can you freeze-dry meat? And I never really thought about it. But it's on now. I mean, this, I'm gonna say it again. This is, this is wonderful. This is a good thing. Um, I wanna show y'all something else. Okay, so I've done some research on how um, to store different products. And you think that you have to vacuum seal your jars, but according to the Harvest Rack website, if you use an oxygen absorber, which is, I mean, y'all, these things are pennies. They, they literally are pennies on the dollar. They just are very cheap. You just wanna keep the oxygen out and that's what that'll do. So I'm gonna keep my chicken on the counter because this is gonna be kind of a conversation piece when, uh, when, when we have company and somebody sees chicken sitting on my counter, they're gonna think I've really lost it. Y'all can hear that it's completely dry. I mean, it sounds like styrofoam. All right, so we're gonna drop a oxygen absorber in there. And we have actually ordered us a uh, sealer too. Yeah, because until reading that, I thought yeah. you had to seal the jar. And voila, freeze dried jar of chicken. That's crazy. I mean, and you could you could use it in recipes just like you would normal chicken because even though this is gonna reconstitute, you'll still know that the amount reconstituted what it's gonna be like right. according to the size of this. Um, so if you're doing a soup, all you gotta do is just dump that in your it. soup and it's gonna and absorb. You could do it at the very end. Yeah. You wouldn't have to cook right. it with the right. soup. But what I'm most excited about is just say we were having fajitas that yeah. night. All I have to do is reconstitute my pe peppers and onions that are already freeze dried. Yeah. Pop them in a skillet and get them hot. And I could even add my, my chicken in that skillet. Mm -hmm. Put some more seasoning on it if I want it more flavored. And an instant meal just like that. Wow. So what a time saver. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you guys are interested in a Harvest Strike freeze dryer, we'll put the link down below. 
If you use our link, we do get a small commission, which helps us feed our farm. And they do a layaway program, but please reach out to me if you do put it on layaway because they don't pick that up in their system in order to give us credit for the sale. It's not, it doesn't work that way. So if you were to put one on low way, reach out to me through email and let me know. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys.